Back in the days of David Org, before his deadbeat son took over. Welcome back to the workbench, everybody. Today we have a Oric, an Oric XL2. So uh, this was back when Oric was still good and before TTI bought the company and just completely ruined everything. But um, in any case, uh, this particular unit is clogged, I believe. I just ran it. Um, and the telltale sign that it's clogged is that the bag does not fill up with air. Um, that almost always means that there is a clog somewhere. And these models are prone to clogging. And we'll talk about why here in just a second. <laughs> oh my yeah there's definitely a clog there you can see but there's more going on as well so we got a few things this brush roll is not in properly so that's a problem uh see this belt slipped off that is probably due to this being installed improperly so that is a problem and then we've got this, which is the beginning of our clog. So I don't know if it ends there or not, but we'll find out. So the first thing that we're going to do is take this brush roll out. And, oh my. Wow. I don't know how they got it in there like that, but... Looking at it here, there's some wear marks, as you can see here, some wear, wear, wear. But now what we're going to have to check is when we put this back together, we're going to have to make sure that this is held in tight by the bottom plate, um, that it's held in tight here. If it's not held in tight, there's going to be issues. Um, you know, it's going to rattle around in here and it's just going to get bad again. So we'll have to look at that upon reassembly. Uh, it's not related to the bearing. Bearing feels smooth, so we're good there. Okay, now we got the brush roll out. We can see the belt, which we'll compare it to a new belt, but, oh, yeah, we don't even need to compare it to a new belt. This one's been burned. So you can see here, so this is how you can tell if a, uh, if your belt's going bad, you'll see glazing. See where that's burned? And you can see where it started to chew it there on the side. So this needs replaced. And now let's check out this um, clog. So if we go in here, we've got some shredded paper. So somebody was doing some paper shredding. And it's all here in this inlet. So hopefully that's it. So somebody just tried to take in too much, uh, you know, kind of compacted trash at one time. Now to be as thorough as possible, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this handle tube because this is also the pathway for the dirt and debris. So air comes in through this port through the fan. This is a direct air unit and then it shoots the dirt up through this tube 90 degree angle to the bag. Now these are fairly small motors. These are running at what are these? What's this one running at? Four amps. They are a decent carpet cleaner because it is a direct air motor and the fan is so close to the floor so you've got a lot of like air velocity very close to the floor that being said this little motor sometimes has trouble shooting big debris up this pipe and they do tend to clog right here especially before that 90 degree turn into the bag um, that is has always been an issue with the XL2s. It's not an issue if you don't pick up stuff that you shouldn't, but you know, we all miss stuff. I even miss stuff. I clogged up my vacuum at home the other day picking up a Lego that I didn't see. So I know stuff happens. <laughs> all right. So now all we did is turn this counterclockwise. This pulls apart, super easy to get to. And now we're going to check, actually, 
before we do that, let's open up this bag compartment. My guess is he probably has a new bag in here since his vacuum wasn't picking up. That seems to be a lot of people's go-to. Yeah, not a not a completely fresh bag. What I saw on the base plate indicates that there might have been some sort of catastrophic... Oh, that's not good either. <laughs> All right, this needs a new brush roll. So this is the dowel that is supposed to be driven down inside the brush roll, uh, and that just popped out. Not supposed to do that. So in any case, this guy's getting a new brush roll because once this happens, there's really no going back. If I put it in there with epoxy or something, it may not get square, it'll be off kilter, it may not work and hold, it's just a whole thing. So, um, so yeah, this needs a new brush roll. So I'm gonna go ahead and install a new brush roll in this XL2. I should have these in stock. This one will work absolutely fine. This is a replacement made by CWP. They run 1625. It's not an arm and a leg. They're very reasonable. So well worth it. Now, the um, the one thing that we want to be aware of though, as I was telling you, on this base plate, you can see here where there's some signs of wear, where the end cap is supposed to be sandwiched. You can see that here as well. Uh, you can see this one's not as bad, but there is a spot where it's jumped out or something like that and gouged the plastic. So I am a little concerned about how this new brush roll is going to fit in here. The only real way to tell is just to go ahead and test it and see what happens. We're gonna go ahead and drop this guy in here. One thing that can happen on these as well is that the motors, because this housing is so small, the motors can actually start to tilt inward. Um, and what that does is that makes the belts kind of ride off and chews up the belts. So we'll check that as well and make sure the belt is riding true. So there is a new and old um, there's two settings on an auric brush roll. One side of the end cap you put up for new, the other side you put up for old. Because this is a new brush, I'm going to put it on the new setting. It's in its housing. That's in there. This actually feels okay side to side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to turn this by hand and just make sure that when I'm turning this by hand that it's not completely riding over this, um, this end stop and it seems to be okay. It is riding a little to the right on this, um, on this belt right here. I'm not in love with that. It's getting close to being problematic. Um, could end up throwing a belt again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some pressure on the motor right here and move it back into alignment. And now I'm going to tighten the screws while I'm doing that. Because our shimming job, it's not a bad enough case for the shimming to work. Okay, that actually looks better. Um, you can see now that on both sides, there is still a little bit of a gap there. It's not as big. Over here, there actually is some space. 
So I think we're riding closer to true to center than we were before. So hopefully that will take care of it until the housing warps more and we end up needing to, uh, of course, shim it. So let's go back on with the belt. Everything looks good in terms of the armature. The stator looks good. I'm sorry, the commutator. Brushes, um, they're spring-loaded, but you can see from the, uh, from the springs that they still have plenty of wear. So let's go ahead and throw this guy back on here. That looks better to me. So before, right now, it's about maybe a sixteenth of an inch riding off of this pulley. Before, it was probably closer to an eighth. Over here, we actually still have just a hairline of gap between the belt and the end of this pulley. That's absolutely fine. That That is more than sufficient. Um, they won't be throwing belts with that where it's at. So that is a good thing that's what we want so now let's check this brush roll and make sure that when we get it back in it's not going to rattle around so i'm going to take this and i'm going to wiggle this up and down and side to side and see if there's any play there is not I'm going to do the same on this other side there's also not any play so even though there was some signs of wear on both ends of the housing Putting the new brush roll in, the tolerances are tight enough. It's not allowing any kind of wiggling on either side. You don't want any wiggle, doesn't matter the brand, but if you put a brush roll back into a damaged housing um, and it's wiggling at all, if there's any kind of slop where it's supposed to clamp down on the ends of the brush roll, what'll happen is when the brush roll starts to rotate, that'll create like a uh, vibration frequency and the end of the brush roll will start to vibrate and it will just destroy the brush roll and the housing. Um, so it just kind of grenades. So you want to make sure that that's tight and this feels good with that new brush roll in place. So I think that we're out of the woods. This was actually a pretty, pretty um, fortunate repair in the sense that the clog was not too bad and it was in an easy to access spot. The motor did not need shimmed, it just needed moved to the side a little bit. So that was good. And then of course I was worried about the um, you know the ends of the brush roll moving around it didn't move around the only thing we really needed to replace was the belt and of course the uh brush roll and the brush rolls are 17 bucks so not too bad The story on Oric is Oric, uh, when David Oric died, he gave, he, the, well, his son took over running the company, and his son essentially ran the business into the ground. It was the classic um, tale of a, a son who didn't understand his father's business. And um, when Oric hit the rocks financially, they sold the business to TTI, uh, which is um, Tektron Tektronic Industries, which is the holding company. They, they buy up, essentially what they do is they buy up brands and then just make their own products under those old brands. So they really, in a way, become um, kind of zombie brands, but depending on the brand. So they hold the rights to Hoover, Royal, uh, Dirt Devil, um, Auric now, but they're a company based out of Hong Kong. And I'll be honest, I don't think they understand their vacuum game because they bought Royal and they absolutely destroyed Royal. I mean, Royal wasn't in a really good position anyway. They were kind of, they were a fading brand. Uh, they bought Hoover and they've turned them into kind of like a very value brand, like a, they're not even mid tier anymore. They bought, uh, Dirt Devil came with Royal and 
Dirt Devil has just become the absolute cheapest vacuum you can buy. I mean, if you need a vacuum for 50, 60 bucks at Walmart, you buy Dirt Devil, you use it for six months, and then you throw it in a landfill. Um, and Auric is kind of in the same boat. They really haven't hit a good stride with Auric. Everything they've released since they purchased Auric has pretty much been a flop, except for maybe their cordless Auric Upright. That, not the pod, not the pod, the pod was also a disaster, but the, um, I forget what it's called, is it the cordless Elevate? I can't remember, but anyway, cordless version of their lightweight upright, that's okay, the magnesium is absolutely terrible, I don't think they're making those anymore, I think they stopped production, but yeah, they just have not hit their stride with any of their vacuum companies, and it seems like each one of them with each passing year kind of loses uh, relevance, um, you know, especially in light of the... Um, especially in light of the competition that they're facing from, uh, you know, newer brands like Shark and Dyson. Um, they just, you know, the reason people buy a TTI product with an old label on it is because they need something cheap. That's ultimately what it comes down to. Auric was designed to be their premium line and they are also ending up selling them very cheap. Like when they closed out the magnesium, they were closing them out at Walmart for like pennies on the dollar. So um, in any case, just not the company that it used to be, unfortunately. I mean, I was never an Auric dealer. I wasn't like gangbusters a fan of Auric, but I can always appreciate a family-owned company that builds products in the U.S. And... Uh, Unfortunately, that is um, no longer the case. R.I.P. David Orrick. All right, so I'm going to plug it in, give them this guy a test run. So the bag is blowing up. I'll show you guys this. So see how the bag is uh, nice and flat right here? So when I turn this on... It means it's shooting all the air up into the bag just like it should. Yeah, so that was a quick rundown of like a like a quick unclog cleaning new brush roll uh, on a Auric XL. So in any case, if you liked what you saw, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you've owned an Auric or uh, you know have any experiences with Auric, I'd love to hear your stories. So drop them down below. Of course, like, subscribe click the bell for notifications it helps us out so much uh, we're a small business and you know i work two jobs and this is a passion of mine so any help you can provide is greatly appreciated just by clicking a button so really appreciate it and of course i will see you in the next one bye